oh i scheduled us for the wrong time i'm realizing now but now we are live everybody welcome to let's talk broncos we are down Bree today um rocking with me zach sears and as always my co-host joey richards uh joey how are you doing today i'm doing well zach i'm a little jealous of you um right now in this nice warm weather and um, I mean, it's warm down here too, but I, I'm still jealous of you. You're, you get get away for a little bit. Um, for those who don't know, you went to the Stanley Cups game. Uh, abs lost probably because of you. Everyone, everyone, go get your hate on the jinx. His at's right under his face, right there at Zach underscore Seegers. Um, no, <laughs> but other than that, I'm I, you know good day. I'm hoping I'm hoping with. Uh, I, I don't think Zach's going to this next game tonight, so uh, we should be no. here, guys. We should be able to win this one. I mean, yeah. they better can't lose another one. Uh, <laughs> hey, Marcellus, thanks for joining us. And uh, joining us today, very excited for the guest we have, uh, Patrick Coyote of uh, the Predominantly Orange, uh, special teams coordinator at uh, Milwaukee High School, just absolutely killing it recently. Uh, Pat, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, uh, outside of the fact that Bree is ducking me right now. She um, is. She didn't, she didn't want the smoke. But, it's an embarrassing uh, look. It's an it embarrassing is. look. Frankly. It is all the all the trash talk that she's been uh, throwing at me on Twitter and and you know all the bullying that she does in the comments of of me. It's it's kind of surprising that she's not here today. But I'm happy to be here with you boys. I'm happy to happy to talk a little Broncos. I've missed you boys. Yeah, how have you been? Uh, it's been Pat? too long, dude. Our our football season is uh, getting underway. You know we've got summer workouts going on right now dealing with all these incoming freshmen uh it's you know it's it's kind of rough but yeah. uh it's it's good seeing the the guys from last year coming in and uh you know going into their junior and senior year and uh making the jumps that they've made and being able to you know be one two three games better than we were last year so um really yeah. just looking forward to that season for sure, man. Uh, it's it's cool you're, you're you're coaching right now. That was always something that I thought I wanted to do as a um, as That's a right. kid growing up. But I, I don't know if I'm cut out for it. So so, so good on you, man. <laughs> it's it's tough, man. You know, you you definitely got to have patience. Um, you got to have patience uh, in your own learning curve as a coach. You know, I I went into my first coaching role um, with Perry High School up in Vancouver, Washington, and um, you know. I came in and they were like, oh, what position do you want to coach? And I was like, uh, honestly, I don't know. And they just kind of threw me at tight ends. And, you know, you just kind of you got to have patience in your own learning curve. And then you got to have patience with these kids who are kind of banking on you to to teach them the ways. So I just try to give them as much as my as much of my football knowledge as I can and spread it around uh, to multiple positions, not just tight ends, but you know, wide receivers, quarterbacks, uh, DBs, linebackers, edge rushers. So. Yeah, small ass biceps. <laughs> this, this guy, this clown. Look at this meathead down here. Um, but yeah, man, it, you know, football's football's exciting. It's always it's always good to get out on the field and and teach these kids uh, a little lesson or two, and um, you know, show them that you still got something in the tank. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I fully agree. Cody's in the <laughs> chat giving Pat a hard time. Love to this see guy. that. He, uh, he's, he's salty because he had to get rid of his Peloton. He can't get on his, his hamster wheel no more. <laughs> Has to actually work out. Uh, well, uh, today's episode, we're talking about the Broncos' most valuable veterans. I think a week or two ago, uh, we looked at the most valuable rookies, did a little fantasy draft. Today, we're looking at the older uh, statesmen, the elder statesmen, uh, Broncos 28 and over. Uh, we're considering positional value, contract value, and everything. And then we'll have a pull at the end to vote, determine the winner. One other wrinkle, Russell Wilson out of the exercise. Otherwise, whoever drafted him first overall uh, was uh, uh, going to win the poll. Um, oh, but we actually always. didn't figure out a draft order at a time. Uh, Pat, you are the guest, so uh, – uh, it, it goes to you. Um, oh, man. Well, you're deciding what order in the snake draft you want to go. So keep that in mind. It'll snake yep. back. Yep. I will uh, read off the possible options just so people can have in mind the players available to us here. Yep. Uh, going from oldest to youngest, Josh Johnson, uh, quarterback, Kareem Jackson, safety, Russell Wilson, quarterback, Tom Compton, offensive lineman, Sam Martin, punter, Mike Purcell, defensive lineman. Kwan Williams, nickel corner, Billy Turner, offensive lineman, 
Eric Tomlinson, tight end, Brandon McManus, kicker, Garrett Bowles, offensive lineman, Deshaun Williams, defensive lineman, Randy Gregory, edge, Melvin Gordon, running back, Graham Glasgow, offensive lineman, Alex Singleton, linebacker, Justin Simmons, safety, Eric Saubert, tight end, Tim Patrick, wide receiver, Ronald Darby, corner, and Ben Braden, offensive lineman. Those are the players available to us. We'll be going four rounds. Uh, so, Pat, wh- where do you want to be going in this draft? You know what? Uh, I, I am going to go first because I am I am the guest and I am selfish. Um, and my, my first pick is going to be Justin Simmons. Um, you know, it, he's, he's the obvious choice for me. Um, when you're, when you're looking at, you know, it, an expansion type team and you're looking to, to grab, um, a veteran player, you want a guy who's not only a leader on the field, but a leader off the field. I think Justin Simmons fits that role perfectly. Um, you know, it, not only has he, uh, become one of the better safeties in the league, arguably the best safety in the NFL, um, but he's also turned into uh, one of the best men off the field. Um, I, I think it's very easy to say that he is uh, an annual contender for the uh, Walter Payton Man of the Year Award for all of his work off of the field and in the social justice realm. Um, but this is a guy on the field that's just the complete package. You know, he can cover, you can put him in the box, he can defend the run. Um, and he has progressed extremely well throughout his career. So for me, uh, my first pick is going to be Justin Simmons. Um, Since I'm determining the order, I'm going to say, Zach, you go second. Sorry. Mm. Sorry, Joey. Sorry. I like that. (laughs) No, it's cool. I like the back to back. Don't worry. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So I will say on Justin Simmons, I think he would have been all of our number one picks. I I think it makes sense. Uh, Joey and I were actually talking about it uh, before the show a little bit. I think the one knock I have, just like the one concern on that pick, is you're paying $18.5 million for a safety that's going to be uh, 28, uh, 29, and 30 on that yeah. deal. Average of $18.5 million on that. Um, yeah. And he's a very good athlete. I, th- I think he's so smart that I'm not so worried about him being like reliant on that athleticism. But I do wonder, are you going to be getting a safety worth $18.5 million maybe on the back end of that? Um, and some – analytics focusing like the Eagles, for example, who believe so much in building front to back, uh, uh, never want to pay a safety, something like 18 and a half million dollars. Uh, so no matter how good they are. So I do think that's the one knock you could, uh, raise on that pick, but everyone has their one little, uh, I don't know, asterisk. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's a, a easier pill to swallow than most of these 28 yeah. and over guys. I have no complaints with it. I think Justin Simmons was the consensus. If I had the first pick, I would have taken Justin Simmons for all the reasons Pat said, the off the field, the on the field, everything. Great player. Other thing, Justin Simmons isn't young, but in this exercise of 28 and over, he's the youngest a player could be right at 28. Yeah. Um, So you thought that's kind of the draw too. is, is also, I mean, you mentioned the, the contract and, you know, we just saw Minka Fitzpatrick get paid big money. Of course, he's a little bit younger than Justin, but, uh, you know, seeing the seeing these other safeties that are in the league that are about to get paid, uh, you know, Jesse Bates being you know one of those guys that's kind of up in that same age range um, and is probably going to get a bigger contract than Justin. I think Justin's contract is going to be, you know, still probably in that top 10 realm of safeties uh, down the down the road. But I think once he gets to that, you know, 30, 30 year old mark, I think it's going to be just just about average. If you can still get a, a high level of play from a 30 year old safety at, you know, a, a top 10 salary, not top five, but a top 10 salary, I think you can take that. You can live with it. I agree. I agree. I I do think that had to be the number one pick. Number two is a little tougher, but I, I do think there's the defined guy here for me, at least. Uh, I'm going to go with Garrett Bowles, uh, age 30. Um, yeah you've got him under contract for three years. So part of this exercise, we're building a team from scratch. Uh, uh, Whoever you select, uh, you're taking on their contract. I have tackle, which I think is maybe the second hardest or the hardest position to cultivate um, in the NFL. It's either tackle or quarterback, in my opinion. Um, I'm solidifying that for the next three years. Uh, Tackle also ages fairly well. So I'm not worried about some serious and bulls is, uh, has the athletic, uh, uh, 
build and, and body type where I don't think there's going to be some serious drop off between now and his age 32 season. Um, and between now and then I'm going to have a high end tackle uh, for 19 million a year. And I am happy to just like set that and forget that. Uh, it, it, we're in this example, we're building an expansion team. The most recent expansion team, the Houston Texans had their first uh, uh, attempt at a launch totally blown up because of how terrible uh, their tackle situation was and how terrible the rest of the offensive line was. That won't be a problem for my expansion team. I'm coming in with a, a steady franchise left tackle um, with no real serious injury concerns. Um, and, and yeah, I'll, I'll take that any day of the week. Yeah. Yeah, man. Sorry, Joey, go ahead. No, you're good. I, I mean, I was just about to say that I like, I, as much as when we did this last thing, I, I, I tried to play devil's advocate on everybody's picks and just, you know, kind of tear them apart. Um, but it, it's, it's tough with bulls. I think it's a good pick. I think it's, I mean, I'm happy with the selection that you left me there, Zach, my, my number two guy that I oh, had. Geez. Um, so I'll say that I think you took the, the, um, lesser than pick than who I'm about to, but Pat, do you have I, a take on this? <laughs> yeah, I, I do actually. Um, you know, I, I think that, I mean, Bowles was probably my second pick, uh, you know, after Justin. Um, but the, you know, the contract is, you know, it is what it is. You're going to pay top end money for a tackle, no matter who it is, whether they're 28, 29, 30. I mean, you, shoot, you're going to, you're going to pay big money for a tackle. Uh, but the added portion to that is Garrett started off his career relatively later. So really, he's just now hitting the peak of what would be his entire career. Um, and like you said, no significant injury history. It might have something to do with the guy who works on his body. I don't know. Um, but Bulls has been playing at a really high level for these last couple of years. And it's been great to see him mold into one of the better tackles in the NFL. I mean, we, we all saw his struggles. We all saw what he went through on the field with all the holding penalties and the poor technique but he's really turned it around. I think that that's, you know, that's your staple tackle for the next three, four years or, or possibly even longer if he continues to play at such a high level, Zach. So I, I commend you. That was a great pick. Thank you. And that's the thing. You can totally sign these guys to extensions, but just having that set for three years is uh, uh, really nice. Joey, you said uh, you had a different number two guy. I was torn between two and three, so I think you probably uh, have the guy that I was uh, debating between. So you took tackle, right? I'm going to go with edge. I'm going to go with Randy Gregory here. I oh. that that that's my pick. That that would have been my number 2 pick in this draft. I love Randy Gregory. Um when the Broncos signed him, it was awesome going back and watching his film. And guys, like for how old he is and it's easy to say like he's older and it's easier to forget it's or I, you would think that he's younger because of how many years he missed in the league with suspensions and different issues like that. Um but, man, I'm not so sure we've seen the best of Randy Gregory. And I'm going to be honest. I don't think we've seen the best of Randy Gregory. I think the yeah. best is to come. Um, if the guy can stay healthy, he's a monster off the edge. His athleticism is something that just, like, it, it just is a bright light off the screen. Like, it's such an easy thing to see. Um, and there's still improvements to be made. And that he's just an awesome player. So I love Randy Gregory, this pick here. Going with positional value. I could have taken somebody else. Um, but I'm, I'm, it's I'm a taking gamble. that. It's a gamble. We're talking about a guy who hasn't played more than 550 snaps in any season in his career. And while there have been the flashes of really high end play at a valuable position, they've been a little sparse. Mm, I don't know, Zach. I think we saw a pretty good season <laughs> last year, man. I don't know. Like if you, <laughs> if you go through he got injured midway through like first seven weeks of the season, I'm with you week nine on i don't think he was playing at a at that all pro level now that was probably injury based but when he hasn't been suspended for the off field issues which don't really concern me based on the nfl's most recent policies but when he hasn't been suspended there have been injury concerns that have cropped up yeah i i, I agree with you zach I, I think i do think it is a gamble and i mean even in reality when we're talking about the denver broncos this signing itself was a gamble um and, and this is uh, a sign of george payton kind of you know, rolling the dice on a guy who may or may not hit hit big. Um, I, I think the the off the field stuff. I think we're kind of past that at this point in Randy Gregory's career. It it seems that he has turned uh, a maturity corner. Uh, he's recognized, you know, what he needs to be as a as a professional. What he needs to be in the NFL uh, to be a good team player, good teammate, 
um, and to really earn this big contract. However, you know, the injuries, the injury concerns are still there. They, they are still there. Is he going to be able to play at that high level for you, Joey? Is he going to be your, your number one edge guy? I, I don't know if he's going to be, but he could be. So that's where that gamble lies. I mean, I think the Broncos did a pretty good job with his contract, though, right? Because this did. is all yes, considering with his contract involved. And that's true. And they got a pretty good deal for him where it's like, hey, if he's injured, like it's not the end of the world. We're not blowing the building up. Um, it's We didn't give him a Von Miller contract this offseason. We got him on a bargain compared to Chandler Jones, Von Miller, and some of these elite guys. So I think that's all in perspective, right? You have to put that in there. Um, so th- th- that's why I'm going to go with Randy Gregory. You're committed for two years, but that's very, you know, manageable. I, the first yeah. out on that deal is going to be after 2024. Uh, you can cut him and save 9.8 million against the cap. Um, yeah, see, so so if he doesn't perform workable. to your standards, or he doesn't perform, and at he'll a high be 30 level, then. Yeah, so and, and age 28, 29 season, and then if you don't like it, you can. Move yeah, on. you just just move on from him. Get <laughs> you know, get a top edge rusher in the in the draft, or or sign another one in free agency. Take another gamble. Exactly, you and know? then I took the only edge rusher really available guy. So Will, I, Will it's Anderson's a little rough out of here for you guys, unless no. unless. Someone's an Aaron Patrick stand. I mean, I don't know who's going to rush the quarterback for you guys. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alex, Alex Singleton is still there. I'm sure you could get some blitz packages. <laughs> oh, woof. Uh, I mean, maybe it's one of the coaches that likes moving <laughs> middle linebackers to edge. <laughs> first, oh, um, first, first pick of the yet? second round. Uh, yeah, okay. First pick of the second round. So I took a little bit of a risk with my oh, first God. pick. I'm going to go with my second pick. Good old reliable Tim Patrick. Oh, um, you s- and and here's the thing: I got That's all the potential in the world with Randy yeah. Gregory. I think for a 28 year old, I took the potential pick. Right, I took the guy that I thought is going to be. Maybe I have the best player on the board in a couple years. You know what I mean? <laughs> for tw- if we're talking 28 year old draft, um, for my second pick, Tim Patrick. Hey, it wouldn't. Would it absolutely? I have a question for you guys. Would it? like shock you tremendously if he ended up as like the most productive receiver or no, no. it wouldn't no. shock me at all exactly no. so i may be taking the best receiver right the best best pass catcher on the team on the broncos um possibly with russell wilson he's he's a healthy player all the time great hands and zach and i have talked about this before i think people think that He's really slow or something like that. Tim Patrick is a really athletic, no athletic guy. Um, it's no weird how the word safe and stuff like that has been turned around almost into a negative in the NFL world. But in this case, it's not at all. Tim Patrick's a beast. I love picking him up on my team. Hey, here's the thing with Tim Patrick. This was a, I mean, this was a guy that we were legitimately. I mean, I was concerned that he wasn't going to be on the Broncos this season. I yeah. thought he was going to be somewhere else because he has the potential to be a, a wide receiver one, you know, bottom bottom barrel wide receiver one, high end wide receiver two for a majority of the teams in the NFL. This is a guy who's six four, you know, pushing two two fifteen, and he is fast for a guy his size. He is fast. I've seen him in person. He's lanky. He is tall. He's got huge hands. I, I mean. This guy is a surefire wide receiver. Him, Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, that's a dangerous trio if all three of them can be productive. Even without, I mean, we saw what the offense could do, what Tim Patrick could do in this offense without, you know, a 100% Cortland Sutton and a Jerry Judy who was being limited by his play caller. And Tim Patrick balled out. He did what he had to do. And he's no going to he's right. going to get his regardless. Yeah. So, I mean, Tim, people sleep on Tim Patrick all the time. It's it's really sad to see. I think he's going to get a little more love this season. But TP Streets deserves all the love, all the hype. Guy has worked his ass off. Excuse me. But he really had he, he's come up to be one of the better and more reliable receivers in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah, I fully agree. And uh, I think he still has some untapped potential still left. Uh, with my second pick here, I'm going to go uh, – it's tough. I think there's a, a healthy drop-off after this top four here. Um, oh, yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't love it. Uh, I, I'm torn between, like, maybe what I think a bargain is at a different position. Um, but 
but frankly, I got, I think I got screwed on the fan vote last time. And no. if I went, oh. if I went, if I went with my head <laughs> on this one, it's going to hurt me in the fan vote again. So I'm actually going to go with the player that I don't have highest rated right now. But <laughs> oh um, I'm playing the fan vote game. I'll own it right now. I know a majority <laughs> of the people voting won't listen to this moment. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm clipping it, by the way. <laughs> I'm going with Ronald Darby. I'm going oh, with Ronald yeah. Darby. Um, Man. And I, for me, it's a nail-biter. I'm totally happy taking Ronald Darby at this moment. I think – the more I think about it, maybe he should be my top rated player because he is a really good cornerback and, and down the stretch of last season, um, or maybe not down the stretch, but like at the three quarters mark of last season, he was having a stretch where he was playing at um, maybe not an elite level, but that tier just outside of elite. Like I think blue chips, elite red chip, that like kind of top 15 ish level. He, he was playing um, cornerback. Fantastic. Uh, Injury is always going to be the concern with him there. Um, consistency of play used to be a concern there, but when you look at how he's played um, for the most part over the past two, three seasons, w- when healthy, it's been fantastic. Um, still have to worry about injury, but uh, at this point, when I'm picking him up, I have his contract information right here. I have him on a, a two year, $25 million deal, um, and I can get out of it next season with a, a $3 million of dead cap, picking up $10 million in, in net savings. Um, if injuries really do seem to be a concern as he's nearing 30, uh, the corner is a premier position. I think Darby can play it at a high level. Um, and even if it's not like the biggest bargain, um, I, I'm really happy with that pick. I think that's a good uh, foundation for my team. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a solid cornerback that you have. Um, you know, it, it's not, it's not your typical, you know, shutdown corner, but, what I, I mean, even signing Ronald Darby last year, that was a gamble um, because it was, you know, he's only played 16 games one time. Uh, you know, he's only finished the season once. He's had all these injury issues, um, but he, you know, he, he turned out a really good season uh, last year, especially across from Sertan. And, you know, I, I think our thought process with that was, OK, Sertan's going to probably ball out as a rookie. Um, so that means Darby is probably going to get thrown out a lot and Darby played well, he held his own. So, uh, you know, that's a solid pick, Zach. I, I, I can't even hate on that because that was going to be my pick, uh, if you didn't take it. Okay. Um, so if Pat can't hate on it, and by the way, guys, before I start hating on everybody, Uh, um, wait, where's the pull up? I'm just trying to tell show hater, uh, (laughs) the hater awards. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm just gonna no. before you everyone takes me serious. I'm just trying to win the game. Um, <laughs> but thug nasty, right? Zach, now. like you're you mentioned the injuries, but like I'm sure you're aware of the extent of the injuries. Where it's Ronald Darby has not played all <laughs> games ever in his career, and we're doing a veterans draft, right? We're going 28 yeah, and, 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 and that's above. The same thing with Bryce Callahan, <laughs> and we were all stumping for Bryce Callahan a month ago. So I'm not no. listening to your your <laughs> your well, no it, narratives. You would you would have taken Ronald Darby here too. Yes, well, no, let me make news. I mean, I just the only reason I find this curious is because if I remember correctly, when I made my Randy Gregory pick. Um, there was a lot of injury concern coming towards oh, my side. Oh, 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 you know oh, what I mean? So yeah, it's just a little. <laughs> You're crazy. talking, uh, uh, I think. How many guy. times did Ronald Darby tear his ACL? Like twice? I don't think it's twice. I hope not. Uh, I, think it was, I think it was once. No, wait. Um, no, it was and, uh, Sidney Jones. Sidney Jones tore his ACL at the, because uh, they both played on the Eagles at one point. So that's yep, what I was Sidney Jones. Josie Boggins Jordan's not is, 28, Boggins. That's what I was going to say. That's why was, he just he, was, he just missed the cut in uh, yeah. six months. He'll be eligible. Yeah, yeah I was not, looking up DJ Jones's birthday, too. I was very yeah. desperate. Yes, I know. It was he hard. To I know. There was, we went for 12 <laughs> with 12 for a reason because there's there's some drop-offs in talent here. Yeah, uh, yeah. Pat, you, just because the abs game is coming up here pretty close, uh, what yeah, is yeah. your pick here? Okay, so I'm having a tough time with this one. Um, it's, one. It, it's hard because you know I, I have back-to-back picks here, um, but I want to I I want to nail down a solid offensive lineman because you got to have a good veteran offensive lineman, uh, especially on an expansion team. So 
what I am going to do here with my second pick is I'm going to take Graham Glasgow. Um, and the reason, the reason is, yes, there's injury concerns and all that. However, he brings veteran leadership to the offensive line, and he can play multiple positions across the offensive line. So if I need him to fill in somewhere, he can fill in. Um, I do think that he is going to be someone who may or may not be someone who's on the chopping block towards the end of camp, um, depending on how certain people play. But for right now, um, I'll take the veteran leadership. He's 29. He's he's on a shorter shorter term contract, um, and he gives me that versatility. So I'm going to take Graham uh, Graham Glasgow here. Yeah, this one I, I I can't really hit on because he was my next available player as well. And Graham, really, I have yeah. a different offensive lineman ahead of Graham Glasgow. Is it Billy Turner? Really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, yeah, no, I had Graham Glasgow ahead of him as well uh, for the same reasons you do, Pat. Versatile, play yeah. multiple positions. Um, that he, he, He's just a good player. I always thought when he was healthy on the Broncos, he was their best interior offensive lineman. Um, so I, I, I like that pick. Yeah. And Zach, he's, also, I, he's also twice as expensive as Billy Turner. You're talking about being versatile. Yeah. Billy Turner is pretty versatile. And – one aspect where Graham Glasgow isn't versatile, and I'm not knocking him because he is very versatile, but but he can't play tackle. That is something Billy yeah. Turner can do, and that is a more valuable position. And That's he true. costs um, actually not even half as much, a quarter as much. He's on a one-year $2.5 million deal. Glasgow is on a two-year uh, $20 million deal. So That's what I said. So now it's now it's my turn, right? It's my turn? That's the guy no, with my it's, heart wants. It's, it's still my turn. Oh, uh, it's still, it's still you got it back to back. It's snake. So I got okay, back to you back. You got it. You got and it. So with my next pick, I, with my I next pick, it. I'm yeah, taking I'd Billy. No, <laughs> I'm not taking Billy Turner. No. Um, no. I, <laughs> I can get it. I can get a tackle somewhere else. Damn it. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, this, this is tough because I do want to add to my, I want to add to the secondary, right? Um, there's no wide receiver left. Thank you. Oh, I like this pick. I like um, this pick. You know, th- there's no uh, there's no tight end that I would really pound the table for at this point. Um, so for me, it's between two guys. Um, one of them is on the way older end, um, and one of them just signed a contract with the Broncos. So I'm going to go with that guy, uh, K1 Williams. Um, I'm going to take like the it. slot corner. Um, you know, he... he Am I going to play him outside? Eh, maybe not. Uh, maybe I'll play him in matchups, but um, you get a guy who's a good slot defender. Those are really tough to come by these days. Uh, pair him with Justin Simmons in the secondary. Um, uh, I, I think that that's probably the best way to go. He's on a fresh deal. Uh, he's 30 years old as well, so the age is up there. But however, if we're pounding the table for Bryce Callahan, we can pound the table for K1 Williams. So, uh, And K1's I mean, so- great. Yeah, K one K one is great. Um, Smart guy so, who plays like a big nickel. Love it. Yeah, yeah. So that's my direction. Zach, what's your I, take on this? I mean, I like the pick. I I feel confident that um, I'm going to take. I talked about oh, you know, my heart <coughs> actually prefers this guy, but I'm going to play uh, Curry favor to the fans here. Well, now I get both. Now I get both guys I would have taken with the fifth pick. Um, because I'm going to get Billy Turner, and I couldn't be happier about that. I, If I'm starting – we're talking about starting an expansion team from, strat, from scratch. I'm starting with Garrett Bowles and Billy Turner, which, like, that's a good – for an expansion team, that's a phenomenal set of starting tackles. That's phenomenal. And maybe I play just Billy Turner, Billy Turner sorry, on my uh, left side along with Garrett Bowles, have left tackle, left guard sorted, may spend that first pick as a, a expansion franchise – on a, a foundational tackle, and now all of a sudden I have three pieces of my offensive line solidified, and I can start really actually building uh, uh, an offense. I'm happy with that. Um, I'm I'm thrilled with that actually. And Billy yeah. Turner, one year, two point five million dollar deal. He's probably going to be more expensive for me in a year, but even then he's going to be thirty one, so he can't ask for that much more money than he's already making. That, that's cheap quality offensive line play. That is so hard to come by in the NFL. I think y'all slept hard on this pick. I like the pick. 
I, I, I think that I mean, you get cool. great versatility. <laughs> it's it's cool. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, injury concerns. Uh, no, I, 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 I agree with you, Zach. I mean, it, it was tough for me to pass up on on Billy just because he uh, he does also offer that uh, versatility as a swing tackle, or even I mean, you can put him at either guard position as well. So um, I, I love that pick for you. I think that that's fantastic. Is he going to be more expensive in a year? Probably, but. Yeah, who cares? I'll, I'll you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have three offensive linemen on rookie deals, and then you're just gonna have to worry about paying Billy Turner. I think you're, I think you'll live. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be fine with it. I think now it's gonna, now we're starting to look at some old guys <laughs> on. Uh, now it's starting to get a little dicey on the draft board for Joey yeah. with back-to-back picks coming up. I feel pretty good. I don't, oh I, no! I do feel pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm confirming. Oh, I think I know where you're gonna go, but it's oh, been geez. Older guys. I, all right. No, I'm, I'm going with Melvin Gordon. Okay, yeah, it's the guys who signed post draft. Though. Yeah, I, I think. Mel, okay, and here's a couple reasons. Melvin Gordon, we saw him last year. Still, it like. So I wouldn't bet on Melvin Gordon a ton going future, but the Broncos got him on a one year deal. On honestly, a deal that I thought he would get a lot more on, and we got him like. Not at all. Like it was a great, great deal the Broncos got him on. So I'm pretty happy with the signing. And last time we saw him, he was great. Melvin Gordon was really good. Pass protect, can catch out of the backfield and run the ball really well. Three aspects of a running back that makes him maybe an every down guy for me this next year. Um, again, I'm taking a position that there was only one of available. I don't I don't think there's any other running backs out there. So I'm taking Melvin Gordon. Um and and I'm happy with that pick. Well, when it, it, it's good, you know, to to jump on a running back when they're not out there because it's so hard to find a running back. They're in such, you know, low supply that it's like fuck. A running back's available. Who cares if he's 32? He's the <laughs> oldest of the top 30 running backs in terms of production. He's over the 1500 touch mark, which normally indicates the end of a career. Who cares? I gotta get a running back. I just we've got to get it. While they're hot. Um, I, I, I just, I don't believe uh, in the team voting strategy. Yes, he hasn't fallen off a cliff yet. And the last time we saw him was good. But running backs notoriously fall off that cliff pretty steep. It could be right around the corner. It could happen in week four of next year. And you just spill, spent one of your foundational franchise building pieces on a running back you can't contribute anymore. Idiot. All right. Well, here we go, Zach. If we're really talking about it. If we're, if we're looking at the available players here, we have a kicker. We got we got we got a nose tackle. We, we, we got a safety. Like a, like I'm I'm just taking the best out of positions that don't aren't that valuable. I'm taking the best player available, and that that's Melvin Gordon. He could he could come in if he was my workhorse. And granted, I'm only looking at next year. I, I'm not looking at the future. You can you can keep the future. I'm looking at a one year deal for Melvin Gordon, and then I can move on. Idiot. <laughs> Frankie wants Melvin on an man. episode. That'd be fantastic. Damn, I would love that. Hey, so. we should get you. You guys should get Melvin on an episode. So then, Zach, you can tell him exactly what you <laughs> just said, <laughs> and then you can get him to do an Oklahoma drill against Cam. That's so, yeah. We all need to we get want. The, the Cam Melvin hate that's sorted. All we, that's all we want. Uh, who's <laughs> your right. back-to-back pick here, yeah. Joey? Okay, my my. I'm going with what Frankie was saying earlier. I'm taking Brandon McManus. I'm taking the kicker, Brandon McManus. I mean, I, I need someone in the locker room that has won a Super Bowl. Oh, <laughs> shut up. That's something Brandon McManus oh has my done. God. Long, longest tenured Bronco. And it, I mean, if we're looking at the available players, are these guys going to win as many games as Brandon Mag- McManus is for me? When there's no kickers available in this draft, I don't think so. I think Brand McManus adds points to my team, um, and I, I, I'm happy with the pick. I like the pick here. Sam Martin is staring me right in the face. Joey put together a really good birds. team. He did put, a, he did put <laughs> That's together a really good team. team. That's, That's going to be hard to beat team. in the fan vote. You know what I'm looking at, Zach? Went over Oof. this last time. I'm looking That's for the tough. panel. I know. I know. You're good. You're good at accumulating it. That's how exactly. Brandon McManus, I think, is a really good pick there. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with, and I do think there's some some good pieces left. I'm also gonna go for the uh vanity pick a little bit here. 
Uh, I was listening to this great uh, exclusive podcast interview with PJ Locke, safety of the Denver Broncos you. on Monday. And, and he mentioned the value of Kareem Jackson's leadership and how uh, huge it was for him being a young player on the team, being able to lean on Kareem Jackson. And even though he's uh, towards the end of his prime, I think he can still be a great player around the box. That's more valuable than ever with uh, uh, the role of like big nickel defenders. I think he can fill that role brilliantly. Um, uh, and yeah, super valuable leader uh, for PJ Locke and whatnot. So I'm uh, uh, really happy with this pick. I will happily walk away with Kareem Jackson just to be like a, a defensive leader, set the tone for my defense in year year one and then uh, retire. Help, help in the secondary a bit with along with Darby. You, you're really you're really gonna make me take Eric Salbert with my last pick, aren't you? No, there's a you're guy really, available. You you're going to Salbert? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Because there's guys I would take before no. Sal. No. Okay. We're not going Salbert. <laughs> um, you know, part of part of me. Okay, first of all, I do like the Kareem Jackson pick. Uh, contract wise, it's a good deal. Uh, you get the the veteran leadership. You get a guy who can still play. Uh, like you said, can still play really close to the box, comes downhill, hits hard, liability and coverage maybe, but um, that's why you got other guys behind him. Um, so I like that pick for you, Zach. That's a good team. That's a solid, that's a solid group. Um, I appreciate some it. Zach Seeger's K Jack tweets. You're about scenes. to end up on K Jack TV, man. Yeah. Um, right. Man, uh, it's tough looking at this, looking at this there, list. There's one pick. Where you get no there's standard. one that slips through the cr- that's and then the there's rocks. all the other picks. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, sh- I'm. Oh man, <laughs> this is tough. This is tough for me. Uh, I'll you know, trade you cake for it because I think I overlooked the guy. <laughs> no, no, you didn't overlook anybody. Um, okay, here's the thing. Part of me really wants to go with Mike Purcell, um, because. He can still play defensive tackle now. Definitely can. Now that being said, injury last year. Yeah, injury last year. His contract's a little hefty. We can, you know, we can move him for some money uh, after this year. So uh, I think that is going to be my go-to here. Uh, I'm going to take Mike Purcell with my last pick. You get a guy, you get a solid guy on the defensive front. You can put guys around him. He's going to be, you know, he's not going to be a guy that's going to be, you know, an Aaron Donald type, you know, defensive tackle, but he's a guy that can still control the gaps very well. Uh, Pretty good run defender. You know, he's not going to get sacks or anything like that, but he's going to plug up some holes in the middle. So uh, I'm going to take Mike Purcell with my final pick. You know, I, I was thinking about this. Mike Purcell, if we could get the Mike Purcell from, not last year, but the year before that. I mean, Broncos fans are ecstatic. They really are. And he's someone, I hear a lot of people actually wanting to like cut Mike Purcell and I don't really see it. I would love the idea of I need a run stop and I can go big with DJ Jones and Mike Purcell. Like I could get big and fast. Yeah. Um, And that that's intriguing to me. I would like keeping him around. Um, So yeah. And you know what? There was a game where he was an inactive last year. I forget which game it was, but the game after and for the rest of the season after, I thought he picked it up. I that's yeah. a take I had um, at the time. You can go. I think I tweeted that back then. But uh, yeah, so good pick. I I mean I I think the sorry. No, Zach, go ahead, but I, I think the main reason why you're seeing people talk about him being cut is because of the amount of money that they can save um, when they. It, you know, if they do cut him, I think it's just over three million. Um, so, I mean, that's a, a considerable chunk of change, especially when you're talking about having guys that can rotate in on the defensive line, um, and then especially with them going with more nickel and dime sets, where you're going to have those four the four down fronts. You're going to have your two edge rushers, and you're going to have your two interior guys. And so, who are you going to take off the field between you know DJ Jones and Draymond Jones? And I, I mean. It's tough to say. So I think that's probably where we're seeing a lot of the, hey, let's cut Mike Purcell talk. Um, but I, I'm with you. I think that he could still be a solid player. I still think that they can squeeze every last bit of whatever he has left in them um, and, and at least get a glimpse 
of that guy from a couple of years ago. Yeah. And he can be a valuable part of the rotation. Like I think this stage of Mike Purcell maybe isn't that every down player he was in 2019, but he no. can still be uh, every first down type of player and get you, and you won't need that with DJ Jones, but just get him on the field a good bit and know he's going to lock up the run for you. And that has a ton of value. Uh, yeah. The longer I've been doing this, the more I believe in like uh, building through the trenches yeah. um, and looking at the way, you know, defensive line play is going the Mike Purcells of the world are more valuable than they've been in a long time. A guy who can really uh, uh, take on double teams like that, uh, play a gap and a half. Um, it's super right. valuable. And if you're a team that's starting from scratch as an expansion franchise, uh, it allows you to throw more assets to the back end to help out. Was probably going to be some shoddy players in coverage uh, outside of Justin Simmons. Oh, shit, sure, you got Justin Simmons in K1 Williams. Your defense is a fantastic place, I think. Um, so, yeah, I really like that pick. Thank you. This is fun. Yeah, thank you so much I, I, for joining us, Pat. Is there anything you want to shout out to the people before we get out of here and head towards I, the Stanley Cup? I just want to. I just want to take this time to to shout out you guys. Honestly, um, you know the the three of you have been putting up some excellent work. You know, I, I watched your guys' interview with Calvin and PJ, and you guys are doing an excellent job. Um, you know, just just keep. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep working hard. Uh, you can find my work over at Predominantly Orange uh, at Patrick Coyote on Twitter. Um, you know, I'm going to be coaching football here for, <laughs> for the next little while, so it's going to be a little sparse. But we're going to have some good articles coming out for training camp. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be out there to to ball with you guys. I know we got our game with Mario coming up and, you know, we're all on the same team. So uh, it's going to be a good time. <laughs> hey, we're going to run up the score. Oh, um, yeah, easy. Yeah, it's going to be. <laughs> um, we, we really appreciate you, Pat. I mean, I don't think the viewers already know. Maybe they do. But Pat, since Zach and I have first started podcasting, our most frequent guest, which shows obviously 100%. how much, yeah, we, we, we think and about your And because he's been so like gracious. That. So yeah. gracious Aww. in his offering. Always like, hey, l let me on. Let me help you guys. And always hard to book guests. So thank you for being such a big help and for supporting us on socials and everything. Always, really, man. really appreciate sure. it. You, um, you you guys just keep going up. I'm telling you, let's talk Broncos. It's gonna be up there. They they, they well, got that you. that slap Cody Rourke in his little podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you guys are gonna be right up there with him. We're and gonna us. start a artificial podcast beef with them to juice our numbers. <laughs> do it, yeah. do it. Now yeah. you, you guys you guys are doing fantastic, and and you know I know, I know all the viewers know that you guys are are putting in that work. So just keep going, and you know, sky's the limit for you two. Really. I appreciate it, man. Always. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah. Joey, tell everyone where they can find all your awesome work. Yeah, at Mile High Sports. Make sure you are subscribed to our podcast on YouTube. That's where you can comment if you're listening through Twitter because that's where we get most of our views. Um, so make sure you go over to the YouTube because make yourself part of the show. Uh, those are just the two things I wanted to say. Yeah, YouTube and Facebook is huge. That's where you can comment and interact with the show. Throughout this experience, uh, we were throwing up comments on the screen screen and whatnot. So also if you're listening to the audio version on Spotify or Apple podcast and want to see like an extra dimension and extra element of the show, head over to Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, and uh, yeah, follow all my writing over at mile high sports and we will see you guys uh, Monday. Uh, make sure you stay tuned next week. We've got another uh, very exciting Broncos guest uh, until next time, everyone let's go Broncos. <laughs>